So we need some notation. So lambda is an eigenvalue of A. A lambda is the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. K is the size of the largest block. Corresponding to lambda and nine is the number of Jordan blocks corresponding to uh, blocks of size i corresponding to lambda And Rj is rank of A minus lambda i power j. Okay, and so for j equal to 1, 2, etc. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so this is some notation. Okay, and uh, for the moment, uh, just bear with me. I'll outline the procedure and then uh, you'll see why we need all this notation. So the following uh, proposition. Sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, can a particular eigenvalue have uh, different sizes, Jordan blocks? Yes. Okay, sir. You could have multiple uh, Jordan blocks associated with the same uh, for the given eigenvalue, and it's not necessary that all the uh, uh, all the uh, uh, all the blocks associated with that eigenvalue should be of the same size. The easiest way to see things like this is to actually write out some uh, Jordan matrices. It's already in Jordan form. You know that that is the uh, that is the so that is the Jordan form of that matrix. So it is already similar to a Jordan matrix. So for example, if I were to write um, 2, 1, 2, 0, this is a 2 cross 2 uh, Jordan block associated with eigenvalue 2. And there could be one more block here. And then I just put fill in zeros everywhere else. So this is a 3 cross 3 matrix, which is already in the Jordan form. It has only one eigenvalue equal to uh, one distinct eigenvalue and that eigenvalue equals two and corresponding to eigenvalue two there are two Jordan blocks. The first Jordan blocks is of si block is of size two cross two. The second Jordan block is of size one cross one. And um, so basically the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue two is uh, three. It occurs three times as the root of the characteristic polynomial. And the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue 2 is going to be 2. You can find two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue 2. So you could take this matrix and try to find a basis for the eigenspace of this uh, eigenvalue equal to 2. And the nice thing about these Jordan blocks is that uh, you can actually, if you just try it for a couple of matrices, you'll realize that you can actually write it out uh, quite easily. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, previously you told that uh, one, once we know the algebraic and geometric multiplicity, we can directly write the Jordan form. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, uh, if, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the sizes are not necessarily same. So uh, if the, uh, let's say, algebraic multiplicity is 4, mm. so geometric multiplicity is 2, 
Mm. No, so the thing is that there could be multiple blocks here. So yeah, if uh, the algebra is multiple, one, one four, the hmm? uh, like uh, in this case, uh, one one block can be three cross three, and other cross, uh, can be one cross one, or other or case. You have two blocks where which are both equal to uh, of size two cross two. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So this procedure that I'm going to tell you will help you figure out exactly which case it is. So I agree with you that. It's not sufficient to know the algebraic and geometric multiplicity of every eigenvalue. You also need to know the sizes of those blocks. Okay, and so that's actually where this Ni will uh, enter into the picture. So you need to know all of these actually to find to write out the uh, the Jordan canonical form, and we'll figure out we'll we'll outline a procedure to determine all these things. Okay. So. Um, Here's a proposition which will actually tell us how to determine the Jordan canonical form. So it has several parts to it. Point one is that a lambda equals n1 plus 2n2 plus etc plus k and k okay so now i must point out that all these definitions are for a particular eigenvalue okay so i am fixing an eigenvalue lambda of a for that eigenvalue a lambda denotes the algebraic multiplicity of that lambda k is the size of the lar largest block corresponding to lambda writing k lambda here but uh, just for just to keep the notation light i'm just calling it k okay but k is going to be different for different eigenvalues of a similarly n9 is the number of jordan blocks of size i corresponding to lambda so ideally i should be writing n i comma lambda or lambda comma i uh, but just to keep the notation light i'm just calling it n i but keep in mind that it is associated with a particular eigenvalue similarly rj is the rank of a minus lambda i power j j equal to 1 2 etc and this also depends on the eigenvalue lambda that i'm fixing here so ideally i should be using rj lambda but to keep the notation light again i'm omitting the lambda from this so a lambda so basically this is uh, not difficult to see there is uh, n1 blocks of size 1 corresponding to lambda there are n2 blocks of size 2 corresponding to lambda etc up to there are uh, there are, this is k is the size of the largest blocks there is so there are k um, uh, uh, k times nk is the number of blocks of size k so if you take the sum of all these things that must equal the algebraic multiplicity of lambda the second point is rj is equal to n minus a lambda for j greater than or equal to k and rj is strictly greater than <coughs> n minus a lambda for j less than k okay what that means is that if i start at j equals 1 and i look at rank of a minus lambda i i'll get some number which is going to be strictly bigger than n minus a lambda and i take j equals 2 again i'll get a number which is strictly bigger than a my n minus a lambda but when i hit k this rj will be equal to n minus a lambda so it will start with a number that's bigger than n minus a lambda and it will keep decreasing as i take higher and higher powers here and at j equal to k it will hit n minus a lambda and then it will stay there so we'll discuss this more uh, later but for now just keep in mind that rj is a decreasing sequence that will start somewhere and keep decreasing down until it hits n minus a lambda and it will stay equal to n minus a lambda for all j bigger than or equal to k. So 
3 you can actually say exactly what rj will be for j less than k and that is this third point here so r k minus 1 so r k equals n minus a lambda r k minus 1 will be equal to n k plus n minus a lambda so n k is the size of the uh, is the number of number of jordan blocks of size k and k is the size of the largest block corresponding to lambda and so r k, <coughs> r k minus 1 will be equal to n k plus n minus a lambda so it is strictly bigger than n minus a lambda it's bigger than n minus a lambda by exactly this value n k r k minus 2 is equal to 2 n k plus n k minus 1 plus n minus a lambda so n k is always at least equal to 1 because by definition when I say k is the size of the largest block I mean that there must be at least one block corresponding to uh, of size k and so nk is at least equal to 1. Now nk minus 1 need not be equal to 1. It could even be equal to 0. But here I have a 2nk plus n minus a lambda. So rk minus 2 is strictly bigger than uh, rk minus 1 and so on. I'll write one more to show you the pattern. rk minus 3 is equal to 3nk plus 2nk minus 1 plus n k minus 2 plus n minus a lambda and so on down to r1 is equal to k minus 1 n k plus k minus 2 n k minus 1 plus etc plus 2n3 plus n2 plus n minus a lambda. So the the way this uh, the proof of this proposition goes, it's a bit uh, uh, detailed. I may do that in the next class, but um, the the way it goes is. Um, So the proof proceeds by looking at Okay, so you look at uh, powers of J minus lambda I power J. Now when I do J minus lambda I, J has uh, the all the eigenvalues of the matrix A along its diagonal. So when I do J minus lambda I, it will kill the diagonal components where this particular eigenvalue appears. And all others, you will get some non-zero value along the diagonal. And uh, wherever the uh, you have killed the eigenvalue, those the, 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 the wherever the diagonal entry appears as zero, those are nilpotent uh, Jordan blocks and when I start taking higher and higher powers those blocks will be, uh, start becoming equal to zero and uh, so basically we exploit the fact that if A is similar to J then that means A minus lambda I is similar to J minus lambda I and so which in, in turn implies that if I raise this to the power j, a minus lambda i power j will be similar to j minus lambda i power j. And so their ranks are equal.
So these are the essential ideas of the proof, but uh, maybe the next, next time I will walk you through the proof. But for now, I, I want to say how, I want to tell you how this proposition can be used to determine uh, the Jordan canonical form. So basically, given A, what we do is um, the first step is to find A lambda. Okay, this is the algebraic multiplicity of every eigenvalue associated with uh, uh, the matrix A. So you need to solve the characteristic polynomial and then find A lambda. Find RJ equal to rank of A minus lambda I power J for every J and for every lambda. So again, the thing is, this might seem like uh, a lot of work because you have to go over every j but uh, keep in mind that there is some number k beyond which this rank will stop it will become n minus a lambda and it will stop there it won't change after that so you you just need to keep going till you see that the rank has become equal and it has stopped uh, uh, stopped decreasing so once you do that it allows you to find K, which is the least J such that RJ equals N minus A lambda. So that's the maximum J to which you need to raise this power. Once the RJ equals N minus A lambda, any higher power that you raise here and find the rank, the rank will always be equal to n minus a lambda. This is also done for every j, uh, every lambda. Then <coughs> use point three in the proposition to find. nk, nk minus 1, etc. up to n2. So if I can scroll up here, so we know that um, rk equals n minus a lambda. rk minus 1 is what we just determined by finding the rank of a minus lambda i power k minus 1. And that equals nk plus a lambda. So we know rk minus 1. We know n minus a lambda. We can find what nk is. And then once we know what nk is, we can substitute that in here. We know rk minus 2. K. We know n minus a lambda. We can determine nk minus 1 and so on. All the way down to from this equation, we can determine what n2 is. Then so then you can go back to the point number one, which says a lambda equals all this. I know what n2, n3 up to nk is, and I know what a lambda is, so I can find out what n1 is. So then I've determined the number of blocks of each of the sizes for every eigenvalue. So then the Jordan form is completely determined.
So in, in the homeworks, I'll. Uh, so one of the uses of this Jordan canonical form is, uh, as I mentioned long ago, uh, is that you can show that any matrix is similar to its transpose. So I'll call it a result. Any A is similar to its transpose. So how do we use this uh, Jordan form theorem to show this? So first, we note that every Jordan block. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that for so computing the Jordan canonical form, uh, yes. first uh, we have to calculate the eigenvalues uh, using characteristic equation yes. and uh, yes. check what is the multiplicity. Correct. Okay. Then we can use the proposition to calculate the form. Then we can use uh, this proposition. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. The first step in the proposition is to first uh, to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial and from that determine the algebraic multiplicity of every eigenvalue. Then corresponding to each eigenvalue, you have to find these rj's, you have to find k, you have to find nk all the way up to n2 and n1 and that, that's it. That's all you need to write out the Jordan canonical form. Yeah, okay, sir. So to see this, basically if I take this matrix zeros with ones along the anti-diagonal and then zeros everywhere else. Now, one interesting thing about this matrix is that what is the inverse of this matrix? Okay, so this, this matrix is actually its own inverse. Okay, you can check that this uh, same thing applies when, uh, even if you take this matrix of order N or whatever order you like. So this is actually a permutation matrix. It basically flips all the entries uh, of the matrix uh, uh, of a vector. So if I take zero, one, 1, 0 times x1, x2, I'll get the vector x2, x1. Or even better, to make it a little more clear, if I take the matrix 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, sorry, 1, 0, 0 times x1, x2, x3, what I get is the vector x3, x2, x1. Okay, it flips, um, uh, it flips the entries considering some mirror point in between. If there's an even number of entries, then it will consider, uh, the, so if it's like x1, x2, x3, x4, you'll get x4, x3, x2, x1, like that. It will flip the entries of the thing. So it's a permutation matrix. It permutes the entries of a vector. And uh, one property of uh, permutation, this permutation matrix, is that it's its own inverse. So if I multiply this by a matrix which has ones along the anti-diagonal, 
um, what I get is basically this transpose of this matrix. Okay, this is something that you can manually verify by multiplying these matrices together. So there's um, if A equals S J S inverse is its Jordan canonical form, then basically we have um, <coughs> because it's in this form, A is similar to J and J is similar to J transpose and J transpose is similar to A transpose which is equal to S transpose inverse times J transpose times S transpose. So this is just taking the transpose of this and so J transpose is similar to A transpose. So that means that A is similar to A transpose. OK, as a consequence, basically any matrix is similar to its transpose. And like I mentioned, this is uh, one of those results which again is very difficult to intuitively explain why you should be able to find an invertible matrix such that S inverse AS will give you A transpose and this is possible for any matrix A. So A and A transpose have the same rank um, and uh, that also is the, the implication of that is basically similar matrices have the same rank. So A and A transpose then have the same rank, which is also another way of seeing why the row rank of a matrix must be equal to the column rank of a matrix. So one of the implications is that A and A transpose have the same rank. So, so, I mean, this is, yeah. Sir, also, row rank, row rank, column rank was falsified in BD. So, the non intuitive are linked together here. I couldn't hear you very well. Uh, sir, uh, the, for a matrix, row rank equal to column rank was not also quite intuitive in that sense. Yes. As yes. you mentioned. So, Correct. in this case, the non intuitive, intuitive things uh, are linked together uh, that way. Yeah. Yeah. So at the time we didn't give a proof for why the row rank must be equal to the column rank. Um, one thing I'll point out is that uh, if you go go back and carefully look at our development till now, um, or at least the development of the uh, Jordan canonical form and the prerequisites needed to determine this uh, Jordan canonical form, uh, the point is that we haven't used the fact that row rank equals column rank to come up with the Jordan canonical form. And as a consequence, it is a valid thing to say that uh, one uh, corollary to this uh, result that we just put down is that the row rank equals the column rank. So this is one way to prove that the row rank equals the column rank. If in our development so far, we had already used the fact that the row rank equals column rank to come up with this uh, Jordan form theorem, then this would not be a proof of the Jordan form theorem uh, or the proof of row rank equals column rank because you can't prove something by assuming it's true and then doing a whole bunch of steps and then coming back and showing that it is true. So this but but that is uh, that that has not that is not the case here and um, uh, basically uh, rank eigenvalues these are all similarity invariant properties. And so A and A transpose have the same rank. Now, sir, yeah. So how to check, like formally prove that A and A transpose will have same rank? 
So this is uh, this is I mean there are other ways to show it also, but this is one way is to say that uh, A and A transpose are similar, and because uh, rank is a similarity invariant property, that is any two similar matrices have the same eigenvalues and the same rank. And therefore, uh, if A and A transpose, or since A and A transpose are similar, they must have the same rank. No, sir, I'm sorry, sir. I meant to say how to show that two similar matrices have same rank. So two similar matrices, I mean, these are things we've already discussed. You should just go back and look at your notes. But similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. And the number of non-zero eigenvalues is the rank of the matrix. And so if they have the same eigenvalues, they must have the same set of zero eigenvalues and the same set of non-zero eigenvalues. So two similar matrices have the same rank. Okay, now, um, so there is, um, there is one other result I want to say, uh, which requires another definition. Uh, I'll maybe state the, the result and then uh, the next time we will show it. So the, the point is like this. So if, um, if P of T is a polynomial, Okay, maybe, I, or, 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 okay, let me do the following. Just to keep it a little more organized. So I'll go up here and I'll call this result one. Now here's a result two. These are some uses of the Jordan canonical form. So um, now if P of T is a polynomial, then P of A commutes with A. Okay, this is an obvious but useful fact. Um, what about the other way? So basically that means if a and B commute, okay? Can we write? B equals P of A for some polynomial. So that is, we've seen that uh, P of A commutes with A, okay? So for any polynomial, it's true. And so can I write a, a matrix that commutes with A as a polynomial of A, right? That's the question. That's the converse of this statement here. So the answer is that this is not always true, okay? Not in general. And the Jordan canonical form allows us to answer when it will be possible to write B equals P of A. Um, so, so, for example, um, just to show why it's not true. So, if I take A equals the identity matrix. Now, um, the every matrix con, uh, c commutes with the identity matrix. So if I take any other matrix B, B times I is the same as I times B. But if I take any polynomial, okay, then for, for every P of T, if I compute P of I, okay, this is going to be some value P of one times the identity matrix. Okay, the polynomial evaluated at one, 
times the edge. So basically, it's going to give me a matrix that's proportional to the identity matrix. So we can only generate uh, matrices of the form alpha times the identity matrix uh, by using polynomials. So it's not so it's not always possible that you can find a matrix, uh, find a polynomial P such that B equals P of A some for some polynomial. OK, that, that so that is clear. But now the question is when when will it be possible to find a polynomial such that a matrix that commutes with A can be written as P of A? So uh, we are out of time for today and uh, we'll need to introduce one other definition of what is known as a dero non derogatory matrix. And if a matrix is non derogatory if every eigenvalue has a geometric multiplicity equal to one, meaning that each distinct eigenvalue has only one Jordan block involving it. And under that condition, we will see what the result about finding a polynomial uh, P such that B can be a matrix B that commutes with A can be written as a polynomial of A uh, in the next class. So that's it for today and we'll continue on Monday.